Okay, we're back live inside theCUBE. This is siliconangle.com and siliconangle.tv's exclusive coverage of HP Discover 2012. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante to do an analysis on big data. John, it's, it's great to be here with you. I mean, you got me into the whole big data trend you know, years ago pulled me out of storage networking world. I want to thank you for that, by the way. And uh, you know, it got me to Hadoop world, and it's, I think it's one of the best things that's, that's, that's ever happened. In terms of just intellectually, the, the great things that are happening and the curiosity that, that one has around big data. So, I wanted to ask you, I want to you know, uh, uh, ask you about your take. You've seen the waves in the industry, you've seen the PC disruption and client server and internet. Um, what's your take on big data? Is that the next wave? Oh, ab absolutely. I'm big on big data because um, big data represents a revolution in my mind, and one that's um, uh, grounded in a lot of hype right now, but real real value, this is a real valuable trend. This is one of those things they call, you know, uh, in Silicon Valley, a thermal. It's a marketplace that's going to suck up massive amounts of growth, and, and I'll tell you why I think big data is so important. Um, in my uh, career, uh, going back to when I was in college, the PC revolution hit the scene, and uh, you know, the PC changed everything. The PC changed computing, it changed the and it created the computer industry as we know it. Bill Gates is just doing the startup, Steve Jobs startup, um, and, and look where, how far we've come. But what P the PC represented today was a, uh, an, an, a new paradigm of putting productivity in the hands of the user. And that changed everything. And you know, you had spreadsheets and software and that created the software industry. So that created wealth, okay? And, and You've seen a lot of other waves, client server, the internet with the World Wide Web, social media with Facebook, uh, with Twitter, uh, connections, people you know, crowdsourcing, and then you got big data. Big data to me wraps everything up right now around cloud, mobile, and social, but big data is about wealth creation and changing the user experience. And if you look at all the changes in history in the computer business, it's always been fundamentally around the user experience. When, when a user experience changes to something new, and that creates new value, new features, new functionality, software, whatever it is, that creates new value, and that's those, that creates a new economics, which really drives wealth, wealth creation. That ecosystem of startups is just how it works. But big data has everything in place, Dave, for that. It has, it's really transformed every part of business and tech, and I believe big data will be an industry by itself. You know, the other thing about big data, John, that we've been batting around here on theCUBE the last you know, several weeks is that the practitioners of big data, the companies out there that are implementing big data and figuring out how to monetize and extract value from data are, the, are going to create more value than the suppliers. You know, we always talk, we love to talk in theCUBE about the next red hat of, of Hadoop and you know, pontificate about what you know, EMC or, or Hortonworks is doing in, in that world and Vertica and Greenplum. And the reality is, I think, John, that the productivity impacts of big data at the practitioner level, the corporations, the financial services companies, the manufacturers, the, the energy companies, is going to create much more wealth than for the technology companies. And if you're an investor out there and you can find who's really actually using big data for their business, I think there's a lot of money to be made there. Yeah, I mean, I think that you're totally right. And, and here's how I see it there. I mean, it all comes down to opportunity, right? Uh, whether you're an entrepreneur with opportunity recognition, whether you're a business creating more value and, and opportunity around your, to your customers, you're going to make more money. But really it's about the user experience, like I said, the market changing, and ultimately this opportunity. And big data gives that, uh, all those elements are in play with big data because with big data, um, it's changing uh, incumbent positions. Leaders have to change because now we heard, you know, you can measure everything in, in with the internet. So, you know, customer experience, user experience, value creation, and ultimately economics. So, so I'm huge on big data, and I got to tell you that the ratio of value creation is not just people selling big data for solutions, because the business opportunities are everywhere. You're seeing uh, software creating uh, applications for data centers, software creating applications for other environments. And data's being generated at a rate now that we've never seen before, and it comes from applications, it comes from people, and it comes from machines. So, you know, you got three types of, 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 of data elements now. Machine data, human data, and ultimately application data. And that's all flooding the marketplace publicly and privately within companies. And so, to me, it's an adapt or die situation, which is why the fact that HP's talking about it here is a testament, because HP's not a hype company. One thing I will give HP credit for is that they don't hype things. When they get behind something, they believe it to be real, 
They're very technical and strong, and they're even pumping up the big data message. So, um, so John, you and I were in, a, in Barcelona in uh, 2010, um, the first year we started working together, and we asked Dave Donatelli at that time, you know, what's your strategy on big data? And we were obviously very high on that at the time. And uh, his response was, well, you know, that's a different part of the company, that's really not my area of responsibility. Now, today, he would never give that response, right? The whole mindset around big data. It wasn't even on his radar screen. Right, he kind of so That video we actually have on SiliconANGLE, if you find it, you'll actually look at him. And he thought about it, just, it was not even on his radar. Yeah, and so, that overnight, that's changed. So, my specific question to you is, what's your take on HP in big data? Um, are they behind, or are they, is, it, is everybody behind? Uh, do they have the right assets? What's your, what's your angle on that? Um, I think HP is really behind um, relative to just getting their act together. So but going back to Donatelli's comment back in Barcelona in, in 2010, you know, he didn't look at it as a sellable product, right? To, you know, Donatelli is, is a great operator and he's a great executive, right? And he runs a billions and billions of dollars for HP, He'd be a CEO anywhere else. Um, so to him it's just like, oh, if I can sell it, I understand it, and it has value to a customer, I'll do it. At that time, big data was really growing up and it was more of an element, and, and he actually did some work that year and doing big data uh, work within his ESSN group. That being said, it's an industry now, so big data is everywhere within HP. So when they bought Vertica, that was a really good move to bring big data into as a product and essentially a product line. But then what happened when they bought Autonomy, it became a big data company. So HP right now is a big data company. They've, they're, they haven't said it directly, but they are, and they will probably say it directly. They are a big data company, because big data is about putting IT services in the hands of someone in Africa, as we heard from HP Labs. IT services will be everywhere. Cloud computing will change the data center. Cloud computing will change the application landscape. Consumerization of IT will be there. So HP is a big data company. They just have to realize it and kind of get their act together and pull together. So, so yes, um, they're doing much better than they did, but they have a lot of work to do. So John, I want to talk about Vertica a little bit. Um, you know that with Yvonne, Jeff Kelly, uh, Jeff Kelly's report on the big data market sizing, uh, $5 billion today, growing to $50 billion by 2015, and the number one big data pure play was Vertica. Now, Jeff chose to keep Vertica and Greenplum and Aster and Natiza as pure plays because they hadn't been fully integrated into their parent companies yet, their acquiring companies yet, so Vertica was number one. Uh, so that we were encouraged very much around Vertica. At the same time, you know, Greenplum, you know, we sensed was struggling a little bit, you know, to figure out what that right business model was. They were sort of ebbing and flowing. Remember, they did their own Hadoop distribution, and they were doing, you know, you know, uh, 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 relationships with, you know, uh, Hortonworks competitors, and then one day, or, or rather, Cloudera competitors, and the other next day they were Cloudera friends, and they've sort of balanced that out. Here's what we see, though. Greenplum now seems to be doing very well. EMC has figured out how to integrate Greenplum into the core sales force. And I don't think HP's done here's, that with Vertica. Well, here's, what, here's what's going down with HP relative to Vertica. Vertica was bought under the, the watch of another CEO, okay? And then Autonomy came in in the same wave of acquisitions. So there was inherent conflict between the two companies, in my mind, right? Well, you have a startup that's growing rapidly in the appliance Hadoop world, and then you have the old school, I guess, big data Autonomy who just thinks they're, you know, the king of the hill. That's a little cultural issue. So I think Vertica's been sideways a little bit, but you know, in talking to Colin Mahoney here in theCUBE, I saw your interview, is that you know, you've got Vertica 6 analytics platform now. Vertica's not doing poorly, okay? They may not have the best uh, hype out there, but they are doing well. They're not dying at all. So Vertica is solid. Vertica's no solid. No doubt. Um, they've got solid performance. They've got solid solution. Vertica is one of the leaders, let's face it. Vertica's one of the leads. I'm high on Vertica, I love Vertica, I think they're really good. But the upside is to really bring Vertica through the HP sales channel. I mean, I think that could be an enormous well, here's, hit. Here's why Vertica's guys. important. Vertica is important because they bring real-time performance and massive scale into an IT environment. So I think that's a focus issue for them, and combined with the HP sales channel, Dave, that is going to be massive. We heard that clear at HP, that Vertica will be a scalable solution. So that's what differentiates them from the competition. As we know, we work a lot with Hadoop and HBase, and they're just now, Cloudera just announced CDH4, which brings high availability and MapReduce 2 to the equation. Again, apples and, apples and oranges. But very, very impressive set of announcements with a lot of rich functionality. We're starting, starting to see, really, a flood 
of innovation coming out of Amar Awadallah's team. Oh, right? Cloudera, I mean, I'm not trying to compare the two because like Cloudera is leading and doing amazing work and then they, they've got more people trained on Hadoop. That ecosystem is a completely different marketplace, right? Vertica has pivoted into a really great solution for large scale enterprises. So, you know, just, it's just different. I mean, then Vertica's not trying to compete with Cloudera. In fact, what I like about the marketplace is, and we predicted from theCUBE, was these vendors that come into the big data world can't be throwing sand around in the sandbox, meaning the ecosystem's just too early in, in, in developing at a very fragile rate, and it's a core, core uh, group of people that are driving that Hadoop community. So it's just too early to get in there and try to land grab. So that was been rejected. MapR, Vertica, you're seeing people align natively with Hadoop and start contributing, and we heard from HP, um, here on, on all sides, both the, the cloud group and within Vertica, that they're contributing to Hadoop. Well, and, and I have to say, I was always very impressed with Vertica. I met Colin Mahoney on a plane a couple years ago, um, and he told me at the time, no, we, did, we already did a, a, a connector to Hadoop and for, uh, with Cloudera, not, not with Cloudera, on our own. Now, most enterprise data warehousing companies went to Cloudera, and Cloudera said, okay, we'll do a, develop a connector, we'll develop a connector with you. Vertica had already done that, you know, so, that shows me that they've got some foresight as well. Now Vertica's really, their vision is really driving into real time. And they're doing things that, you know, you're seeing really these Duke startups doing. So Vertica is there and they're, you know, intending to compete very effectively, I think. Yeah, and I think you, just, you brought up the point about HP software, right? Mm. Having to get their act together. I think this is a great opportunity. The new uh, COO, it comes from the software side of the business. Um, and so you're, I think I like Meg Whitman's moves. We talked about her, her segment, we didn't really get into that there, but you mentioned HP has to get their, uh, you know, really sharpen their focus on software. This is an amazing opportunity. They got all that legacy IP and, and good IP from autonomy. They paid a lot for it. There's excitement to bring that in. You got Vertica. And HP Software has a division that actually has great software for developers. So, you know, they bought Mercury Interactive, so you know that they got it, right? So, you know, they have to be a software company. Software is the key to commodity hardware. And if you're going to learn anything from Hadoop and what Cloudera has done and now Hortonworks, is that you can put great software on commodity hardware and scale it. So, you know, I think there's an opportunity for HP to use this moment of big data to be the software company that they need to Should be. Should HP buy Cloudera? I think so, I think I talked to the folks here within HP, they said it's too early because it's not clear that they're going to be the absolute winner and that's the right move for them. And I think HP doesn't intend to buy companies that they have to nurture a little bit. I think Cloudera is, is ripe to buy. I would buy Cloudera. What if Oracle would? buys Cloudera? <laughs> it's a would smart you try? I, I personally <laughs> would buy Cloud. If I was at HP, I would buy Cloudera uh, for a billion dollars. And uh, I, know, I think the VCs would go for that deal. Um, have no, no one's told me that they'd go for that deal. But what, what, what we we'll would do for HP is that it would give them a leadership position instantly overnight at many levels. So uh, at a marketing level, at a product level. Open source software. Open source community. They're dabbling with OpenStack, which I think is, it's okay, but I'm, you know, I'm not falling out of my chair with OpenStack, right? I haven't seen that. OpenStack doesn't impress me from an HP perspective. They're just too big to be meddling around in open source like that, at that level. They should, of course, it's good to be in there, but that's not the flag that I'd be waving around uh, in the marketplace as a leadership. OpenStack is a great initiative, but it's one of many. You have MongoDB, you got Cl uh, Cloudera with Hadoop, so there's a lot of things that they could do. So, and they got the dough to do it, so, you know, acquisitions are going to be key to HP. All right, John, this is a good segment. Uh, we got a break. This is uh, SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage from HP Discover. We're live, we'll be right back, keep it right there.